Are you rolling? Yes. Oh, okay, we're rolling. Welcome everybody to Player School. Thanks for coming out. We're gonna. Um, I'd like to introduce to you um, Jay Oliver and uh, sorry. Oh, Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> and uh, Rob Silverman. As soon as he gets his thing plugged in. <laughs> so sit back and enjoy. This is gonna be fun. Music picked me. <clears throat> I mean, it, my parents were jazz singers, so I was hearing jazz harmony when I was still in the womb. Apparently, I was playing a jazz waltz when I was four years old. <clears throat> I don't remember, but we had this little uh, organ keyboard that had a, had a blower in it. It was all my parents could afford, and so I was playing. I just couldn't. I was playing right away. Apparently, I was born with perfect pitch, so it just you know, music is like. I don't know. I don't know if you guys believe in reincarnation, but I always felt like I was relearning something I had already known from another time. Everything just came really, really easy for me. And then at some point I hit a wall and it didn't, it wasn't so easy anymore. So it made sense to me that it's like, well, this is as good as I was in the previous life. So now I have to push beyond that and figure out how to get better. And that took a while, but I did just a lot of listening, a lot of listening. That, that's, I think, I say this to everybody, you know, whoever wants to know, but uh, I think everyone's biggest hurdle is that they, they're not hearing the stuff here first. And so they rely on hand memory. And, and every time they go play, they just play the same shit they've always played. And it's just, you know, I just say it sort of reinforces their own mediocrity. <clears throat> what you need to do is stop playing and start listening to better people and really hear it and get it digested so that it comes out of your pores. And then when you sit down again, and literally it could be months later, you sit down again and you're like a different musician. There's a chick, Herbie, Keith Jarrett, oh man. My world changed dramatically when I really got into Keith. Just piano players for me, you know. I'm, Michael Brecker is like a huge hero of mine, <clears throat> and Pat Metheny. I totally grew up. I listened to every single Pat Metheny tune. Him and Lyle together were just an incredible combination, and I am. Um, I, I got that, and I even sometimes when I solo, I, I, I'm, I'm more inspired by a guitar player, you know, than I am <clears throat> guitar. I loved guitar. I was a, always a frustrated guitar player. Pat and then uh, you know all the cats. Larry Carlton. Oh man. I just, those solos and all that stuff just incredibly amazing. I was really into drums and uh, you know I mean my best friend for years and years was Dave Weckl and we he left his drum set in my living room permanently so it became the furniture my mom was just like forget the cat forget the couch forget everything else and uh, and so it was there all the time and we, we would play almost every day he just stopped by for a minute we would just jam around um, but you know what was interesting is as soon as he would leave I'd go sit down at the drum set and play the problem is I'm left-handed so I learned how to play left-handed and right-footed, you know, and uh, that was weird. But, you know, I just really got into it. I mean, I really got into it. And so the, the great thing is that as Dave progressed, I was able to sort of m match him, not match him, but follow him. You know, I understood what he was doing and when he was doing it. And, you know, I just really learned as a drummer. So, and then I started, like, sort of later, just recently, I started playing drum licks on keyboard. Why not? That's kind of an interesting thing. It was kind of one of these, like, uh, you know, I was doing it. You know, whatever, you know, like, 
just uh, get uh, paradiddles and things. Um, but it kind of works, you know, and then, like, you, then the, the accents, you know, part of what makes Chick so awesome is that his, his uh, accents versus his non-accent lines or notes are just huge. And then he'll take that whole thing and displace it, which is just awesome. to be so aware of what everybody's doing at every moment and then vice versa you know we all you know we all listen totally listening and that's the thing that I mean uh, I knew there were some some business people that used to use jazz as a, as a model of how to work together <clears throat> in a team you know and it's uh, it's kind of what we're doing you know so if he suddenly goes off into something completely different I'm realizing that he's taking it somewhere else and I have to stop what I was doing and follow him find a way you know so we're doing a lot of that i think these guys are amazing yeah i mean i'm i've gotten to the point where i've learned how to recover because everything i do is a mistake I'm constantly just going, well, let's, I don't know, let's, let's do this line. I don't know where I'm going. I have no idea where I'm going. I don't know what mode I'm in. I don't know what, what the relationship to the chord or the key. I'm just going off somewhere. But I got good at being able to pull it back and, and go right back in the pocket and where we were, where the song was. And, and everyone just goes, whoa, what the hell did you just do? You know, and I'm like, I have no idea. I really don't know. Just played some shit. But I just learned how to like pull it back and, and come back in as if I as if I meant that. You know? So it's really a series of mistakes. taking from a guy who was a jazz pianist um, and so I you know and I'd go see him play a lot and I really I learned a lot from him but seriously a lot of it is just listening you know I didn't I'm, I'm one of those weird guys like maybe maybe you shouldn't be asking me this question but I don't necessarily I don't work the way most people do because my ears are so in tune I know exactly if he goes off into a different I mean I I, I just hear it and I go there I don't think Oh, he's on the subdominant of the third and the I, I don't even know it. But like like strangely, I'm I'm pulling off some shit here today that I didn't think I could do. And just it would look two months ago I, I couldn't do that. And I thought, how did that happen? Where did that come from? I haven't practiced. I haven't sat down once to like actually really, you know, think about practicing. And it's what Rob said, it's because I practiced twenty-four seven. 